So NASA just discovered what they are deeming as Earth 2.0. This planet's actual name is Kepler 452b. Now Kepler 452b is the first size Earth-sized planet within the habitable zone of a star similar to our own. It's about 60% bigger than Earth and it's located in its star's habitable zone, like I mentioned, uh, the region where life-sustaining liquid water is possible on the surface of a planet. While it's a bit farther from its star than Earth uh, is from the Sun, the star is brighter, so the planet gets about the same amount of energy from its star as Earth does from the Sun. It takes about 385 days for the planet to orbit its star, and because it spent so long uh, orbiting in this zone, six billion years to be exact, it's had plenty of time to brew life. Now, one of Kepler's uh, researchers says that this is substantial opportunity uh, for life to arise should all the necessary ingredients and conditions for life exist on this planet. So that's an important uh, you know, note to make here is that they don't even know if this planet has an atmosphere, uh, let alone one that could breed life. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're even just speculating that it is a rocky, solid planet right. based on relative factors that they have, mm -hmm. gravity, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and it's amazing that they can get any information from that far away, but the information that they have is, of course, limited. It's interesting. I don't know exactly what we would do with it, but it is good to, to have more. Uh, they, they have some uh, planets like this that have fit into the habitable zone, but even one or two added to that is, of course, good if you're, if you're hoping to find uh, alien life. I mean, they, they, I've seen pictures. Talk about no atmosphere. I've seen better atmosphere at a Denny's. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus I mean, and, guess, and no charisma either. No. None. That, that planet. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the main question is, I mean, John is somewhat notorious here for being on the first ship to Mars if, they go to, if we go to inhabit uh, how far, Mars. How far away is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then this one, yeah. I mean, I guess depending on the distance, yeah. knowing only the few things, maybe a few more uh, 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 facts we can find out later, would you be willing to inhabit a new Earth? Well, as of right now, I'm pretty sure that I could be born, live, and die like a hundred times on the trip there, so probably not. If I mean, they, we're going to we find a way to get faster there. Than, if we had faster than light, would I go to look if I could be a part of it? Like, oh, okay, we need like a, a botanist, you know, an a astronomer, and also some jackass who talks on the internet. You need a balanced crew? <laughs> sure, I'd go then. But it's not the same as Mars. Like, Mars, we know we have a lot of information. It's right. only, it's much closer, something like nine months or something for the Understood. trip. I'm less interested. Although, it does have the element of mystery, the possibility that there is alien life there or evidence of alien life. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that's pretty exciting. My favorite part of this entire story, I mean, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing that they have the technology to find this. I think it's amazing that this exists and we're, you know, talking about it. I think the best angle here is this is going to be like the biggest mind fuck for everybody who believes in evolution. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Once they kind of figure out that if there is water, if there, uh, you know, is it's, it is habitable, and if it is habitated, I think that's going to be a pretty interesting finding. Yeah, if like episodes of reality shows were being beamed from there, that would be pretty amazing. Unfortunately, I have a feeling that the sorts of blogs and news sites who are talking about this is probably the sort that those who don't believe in evolution probably don't frequent that much, unfortunately. Never know. But yeah, it is exciting. Even even if even if we never have the capacity or the technology to actually send a person there. Just the fact that it exists and, and it inspires scientists to continue to look for even possibly closer uh, sort of uh, analogs to Earth. That, that is definitely exciting.